Hi. Good morning. This is me, the new and improved college essay guy, the new more streamlined version. You might not recognize me because I have no beard. And funny story, I was shaving and my wife was like, oh, you should shave it like a particular way. And I did that. And I was like, that looks weird. <laughs> she was like, yeah. And I was like, I don't think there's any like fixing this. And she's like, yeah, I don't think so either. So I just shaved everything. So hi. Um, welcome to the webinar. We'll start in about one minute. Uh, until then, how are folks? So type in the chat box, find it if you like. Um, and feel free to say good morning, maybe say where you're logging in from. That's always fun. I'm always interested to know where folks are calling in from. And uh, what do I want you to know? I guess I'll just go ahead and put up my screen, my uh, do my screen share thing, just so you know you're in the right place and you'll see me in the little corner here. Hi. Um, so cool. Long Beach, Long Island, from Long Beach to Long Island. Awesome, Minneapolis, Hillsdale, Illinois. Bozeman, I love Bozeman, Montana. Michigan, Portland, Connecticut, Malibu, Greenville, North Carolina. That's close to where I'm from, where my family's from. Well, welcome, welcome all. Uh, and we've got Greensboro. So we've got Greenville, from Greenville to, to Greensboro, North Carolina. I know that real well. What if I just did the whole webinar in my North Carolina accent? That, that would make some of y'all feel at home and some of y'all wonder where you were, wh which webinar you'd logged into. Um, all right, I'll stop being silly. Let's get started, shall we? Thanks for being on time. So here are, let me just minimize this because I've got some giant screen action on. Uh, five ways to help students create an amazing application uh, in, in less time. That, that's, that's the hope, right? <laughs> How do we do it in less time? How do we not stretch this out over six long months? Um, so I hope that you'll find these resources useful. Um, if you've got questions, type them in the chat box and I'll get to them at the end of the webinar. Uh, what are we doing? Let's get into it. This is me, if you've never heard of me. I am the college essay guy. I went to Northwestern and then UC Irvine. I got some counseling certificates. You can read all that. Um, I love to collect certifications. Um, I think the next certificate, what will the next certification I get be? Maybe neuro-linguistic programming. I'm really interested in that. Um, there's a cool process that I'm involved in called circling. I don't know if you can get certified in circling, but that would be fun. Uh, so what else? Oh, I give away lots of free stuff on my website. If this is the first time you're hearing about me, go to collegeessayguy.com slash free and type whatever you're looking for in that little box with the tiny blue arrow here. What else? Um, oh, I've got this podcast. And if you're on my email list, you've heard about it. I've got four new episodes coming out really soon. Uh, three on testing, one with Bob Schaefer from Fair Test. I've got one with um, Jed Appleruth, just released on 25 tips for reducing anxiety and testing. One with Adam Ingersoll coming up from Compass and then one with uh, Lisa Heffernan from Grown and Flown. So those will be coming very soon. Uh, I've spent a lot of time thinking about college essays. In fact, I had enough to write a book on it. I'm writing a new book and I'll share with you some of that content today. And I've got this cool Matchlighter scholarship. If you've never heard of it, go to collegeessayguy.com slash matchlighters. It basically offers four hours of free essay help and two hours of free list development help to students who qualify financially. So if you're a counselor and you're listening to this and you're like, man, I'd love to do, you know, I'd love to work with one more pro bono student. Join us. We matched 100 students last year. We'd love to match 150 or, or maybe 200 this year. We don't want you to sign up to work with six students. It's just one, maybe two at the most, okay? Because we feel like sometimes those relationships can kind of, <laughs> you know, develop and suddenly you're like spending a lot of time with the student, which I think is great. But what we're committing to with these students is four hours of essay help and two hours of list development help. And you can do either one. Yeah, that's going to be opening up real soon. And here's my latest picture of me with my daughter. She's kind of getting tired of my antics, as you can see by this photo. Okay, so this is, uh, I don't know if you've seen this image before. I'm going to take these little things off. Um, but this is a hashtag fail, right? And I, I can't tell you how much joy I get out of seeing a tow truck tow a tow truck. It's like one of my favorite examples of, of irony. But have you seen this image? Ba Bam! A tow truck. Towing a tow truck, towing a tow truck. That's fun to say. Not as easy to, not as hard to say as girl gargoyle, guy gargoyle, by the way. If you try saying that sometime, try it right now. Girl gargoyle, guy gargoyle. It's really hard to say. Um, on the other hand, so this is from Fail Blog, these, these images. Fail Blog is one of my favorite, like, guilty pleasures when it's midnight. This guy, you know, was made fun of for his hydraulics until the storm hit and then when. And I like this guy. I love this Jurassic Park sticker. 
almost as much as I love this girl in the back seat. <laughs> just chilling on her phone. Boy, do I know what that feels like. I know what both feel like, actually. All right, enough framing devices. Why am I sharing that with you? Because I'm about to share with you five common college app hashtag fails. And that kind of sounded harsh to me. So I crossed it out and I'm calling them missed opportunities. That's what the UCs call these. Um, or five ways to up-level an application. Uh, if you were logged on for the student version of this, you're gonna see that the content is pretty similar. I'm gonna be talking to you as counselors. Um, but I'll also share with you, in my opinion, the differences between a boring essay and a standout essay. And this is gonna be connected to content from my new book that I'm working on now. Uh, four ways to know if a personal statement is amazing. Five ways to up-level the activities list. Why the additional info section is so important and what to put in there why I think X summer timeline, which I'll share with you is the best one. And then I'll do a little three minute PSA for my upcoming counselor training program, which is starting in May 1st, which is like two weeks from now, which I'm really excited about. So at the end, I'll share with you this, or by the end, I should say, I'll share with you this PDF with my college prep timeline, a video on the four qualities of a great personal statement. Uh, I'm gonna make a special offer particular to this session that's good for today only. And, uh, and then I'll give away a book. Uh, remind me to give away the book because I might forget. So when we're in the Q&A, if I haven't given away a book yet, be like, hey, Ethan, what about that book offer? So here are five ways to up-level a college application. Vis-a-vis, -vis, which is my friend Lisa's like new favorite phrase, so I'm saying it now. Ethan's list of college app missed opportunities. So the first thing that I think students do and or fail to do is to like up-level their pizza ingredients. So they they include just okay pizza ingredients. And what do I mean by this? Well, Let's ask what makes a great college essay? What is the difference between a boring essay and one that stands out? So consider for a moment, and you've probably heard me, if you've heard me deliver my how to up-level an essay in 20 minutes um, talk before you've, you've, and I don't know how many of you have, but I talk about this a little bit, one of these, some of these qualities, but I'm actually gonna offer a different frame uh, this morning. I think the difference between a boring essay and a standout essay is that a boring essay chooses a common topic, makes common connections, and uses common language. This is, I love this framing because it's so easy to explain this to students. You can steal this, you can use this, and if you wanna give me credit, that would be awesome. But a standout essay chooses, when possible, an uncommon topic, right? Makes uncommon connections, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a minute, and uncommon language, okay? Now, I used to use this when just talking about the UCs, uh, and supplements, but I'm, I'm starting to see that it's useful for the personal statement and it's useful for the activities list. In essence, it's a way of looking at the whole application. So a common example of this on a, this would probably be an extracurricular essay, common topic, basketball, common connections. It's taught me the values of hard work, discipline, perseverance, common language, teamwork is essential for success. Snooze, right? We, we've seen that essay before. Whereas an uncommon essay, might sound more like this. I love this essay. Uh, I've devoted thousands of hours to playing the Santur. Uncommon topic, right? A classical Persian instrument that originated in the Middle East. Some think I'm strange. A Persian redheaded Jewish teenager obsessed with an ancient musical instrument. But many don't see what I see. My Santur is King, King David's lyre. I love that. That's some uncommon language, right? Nice metaphor. It can soothe, enrapture, mesmerize. It's also a tool for social change. What? Many view Iran as a land of terrorists, but when I play, if just for a moment, the barrier is broken and the innocent of Iran, the educated, the artists, the innovators come to life. The Santor is also my way of connecting to my Persian grandfather who was afflicted with Alzheimer's. In December, I'll be releasing my first album and donating the proceeds to Alzheimer's research, doing my part to help eradicate the disease and preserve the voice of the Santor so it shall never be forgotten. Love that. So uncommon example right? The Santor, uncommon topic. Uncommon connections. Imagine for a second that this is just a violin essay or just a piano essay. And by just, I mean, that's something that students more, you know, typically write about. But look at the connections that he's making. The, the, the violin or this musical instrument has helped him connect to social change. It is a vehicle for social change, family and culture, and helping others. So these are three connections that you, one wouldn't normally associate, I think, with a musical instrument. Uh, topic essay. An uncommon language. My son is King David's liar. And in the longer version that he has of this, he has some other poetic phrases like this. 
how does one do this? And by you, I mean, you know, how does the student do this, of course? And I believe this is the key to standing out on an essay. And I'm starting to think on the entire application, because like I said, I used to apply this to just UC personal insight questions, but I'm like, holy, whatever, Batman, holy cow, Batman. <laughs> so how does one do this? First, here's the exercise. And this is an exercise that you can walk your students through and it will take like five minutes. Okay. And you can do this in a group setting, or you can do this in the one-on-one -on -one setting. So first I want you to pick a common topic which is to say, and actually you can ask the student to pick a common topic, right? So, you know, ask the student, give me the most cliche topic that you're most self-conscious about. So you can type some in the chat box now if you want. But, you know, the ones that typically come up are the sports injury essay, right? The mission trip, um, the musical instrument essay, okay? So any of those will work. Let's just pick one at random. Actually, let's see what folks are coming in on, on the chat box. Let's say mission trip, great. So m mission trip essay. So for the mission trip essay, what would be the common values that we would associate with this? Now, I've got an image of some values up on the screen, but it might be too blurry for you to read just based on the resolution of your computer. So just Google values exercise. You can just open up another tab and just Google values exercise and click the link at the top and you'll be taken to the, this list of values. Go ahead and do this because I want you to spend just two minutes with me on this exercise. So if you can see it, or if you've already got the values exercise in front of you, ask yourself, what would the typical mission trip essay, which values would that essay tend to focus on? And I'm just scanning this list. Working with others, you know, particularly these are some of the mission trip essays are sometimes we were building something for some people. Um, teamwork is a pretty typical one, you know, we, but it, you know, I learned more about working with others. Um, what else? Empathy, oftentimes, right? The student. And you guys tell me, type in the chat box. What are the typical values? Travel. Yeah. I got to see things I'd never seen before. Religion or faith is a big one too, right? Connecting somehow to, you know, oftentimes these mission trips are attached to, you know, some kind of faith. What else? Passion. Yeah. I discovered that I was really passionate about or resilience. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing beyond what I believed that I could do. I, we work so hard day and night. Social change, these are the typical ones, right? So what I have students do is I basically do this kind of clear cutting with them where I'm asking them to come up with the typical values that the usual, and they have to kind of imagine the usual mission trip essay, but we can do this. Um, and then I ask them, would you be willing to, for the sake of this brainstorm, not write an essay using those values? And they go, ah, and there's a little moment of like, okay, sure. And then we go, okay, now let's brainstorm one uncommon connection. Okay, so take a look at this list again, whether you're Googling it or whether you're looking, you can read the screen. What is one uncommon connection, something that you wouldn't normally find in the typical mission trip essay? Feel free to type it in the chat box. So I'll, I'll take a look at some. Uh, ooh, ecological awareness, says Karen, I love it. Mark says comedy, great. Creativity, privacy, yes, I love that. These, I mean, money, financial gain, yeah, that's a great one. So the reason I, I mention these is that, you know, ask yourself this, would you rather read the essay that's on teamwork, collaboration, and perseverance, or would you rather read the essay that's on uh, ecology, laughter, and financial gain, right? Like that, I'm, I'm like, where does that essay go? Now, that's an interesting challenge for some students because at first they might not see where the connection is. And I think that's a good thing because consider, I tell the student, tell students to like, consider, put yourself in the position of the reader. If, the, if that paragraph begins, the, what I learned on this mission trip beyond X, Y, and Z was the power of laughter. Okay, I'm in, I'm gonna read that paragraph, you know. I also learned in you know, the next paragraph, it taught me something about my need for privacy. Okay, cool. I'm interested. Okay. This is going to help might set them apart. It's a simple exercise, but by just giving them this values exercise, boom, and then encouraging them to not think about the typical or common connections to think about some uncommon. And if you can get them to do one, then they can do two. And if they can do two, they can do three. And once they've got like four, that's enough for an essay. Okay. Now you might have to kind of tease it out and you might have to kind of challenge them. Like sometimes I'll look at the list and I'll be like, 
what did you learn about family on your mission trip? And they might, and some students are going to be really fast at this. Oftentimes in the Myers-Briggs, these are the end students, the intuitive or great at abstract thought. And sometimes other students have a little bit more trouble with this. So kind of giving them some examples or showing them the example that I just showed you where two things don't seem to go, music instrument, social change, what? Oh, and that leap that, that the reader, the student is making in the essay it's almost like a joke. It's almost like if you tell a joke and the punchline is right next to it, the little leap we make, this is another analogy I use with them, is like kind of boring, kind of obvious. But if you space it too far apart, then the leap we have to make is like didn't quite make it. So it's kind of like figuring out the right distance for the setup and the payoff, which is to say your topic and the value you learned. Okay, <laughs> enough metaphors. I'll try and use fewer than 16 metaphors. So here's my quiz for you. If we, uh, if, we're, if you're on board with the notion that a standout essay can cho choose an uncommon topic, uncommon connections, and uncommon language, then where, given what I've shared with you, do I think students should invest most of their time? It, it's kind of obvious, right? But I believe that a standout essay really should be investing in those uncommon connections. Why? Because a lot of students haven't played the tour before. If they've got the violin that they're working with, I tell students like, don't not write about it. If you spent 12 years playing it, <laughs> the reader might want to know, so what were those 12 years like, right? So I wouldn't just like ignore that part, but because the topic is common, it's going to be all the more important to use uncommon connections because it's going to be that much harder to stand out. There's almost like a reciprocal relationship, right? So what I mean by that is like a Santor is already standing out. Those uncommon connections are going to help it stand out even further. Uncommon language, great bonus. Right. But for those students who have a common topic and who don't consider themselves writers and feel like they're not capable of poetic language, in other words, can't do one and three, all the more important to do two. And can students do this? Absolutely. And you can help them, you know, and I'd say, you know, spend 10 minutes on this, showing them how to do this. And then they're off and running. If you do it in the workshop setting, even better, because you don't have to have the same conversation over and over. Why should you do this? Better ingredients, better pizza. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I think many people think that the ingredients of the essay are the topic. And they're like, well, this is all I'm working with. Volleyball, it's all I got. I think the ingredients are actually the connections that the student's making. It's not the topic, it's what you do with it. And how, what, do you, what do I mean by how do you, because that's something we say a lot or we hear a lot. What do you mean, what do I do with it? Well, go back to that values exercise and start to make some connections. Because another thing that I like to say is your topic is not really your topic. Okay, your topic is just the the vessel. I mean, now I'm gonna use my pizza metaphor. Your vessel for all the toppings <laughs> and the sauce. Now I'm really mixing my metaphors now, right? But really the topic is just the lens that we're using, right? To get to all the different parts of you, all these values and how you've manifested these values through, yeah, through volleyball or through the mission trip or through whatever it is. But invest in the ingredients, invest in the connections. Okay, that's the first one. Better ingredients, better pizza. That's my first tip. I, I, it would be nice if they all had like, you know, contemporary slogans. I don't know if I could do that. Second thing that I think students often miss out on is they, they often write essays that are one dimensional in the Aristotelian sense. So what do I mean by that? Aristotle, get this, I'm really excited to share this. Aristotle had three modes of persuasion. So there's pathos, right? Which in order to persuade someone you're appealing to their emotions. There's logos which is trying to convince someone through reason or logic. So I'm pointing to my heart here and logic here. And then ethos is what the speaker does in order to establish their credibility, okay? Uh, and then like the character and makes an ethical appeal. Now, my friend, Nick, we were having uh, a, you know, a chat, like I would say like two months ago, and he was talking, I was telling him what I was working on. He's talking about grant applications and how he feels like a great grant application appeals to all three, logos, pathos and ethos, okay? Appeals to the emotions, logic establishes the character of the speaker. Well, it wasn't much of a leap to think about how that relates to a great college application. And I love this framing. And I think that some students will only appeal to one, like they'll only appeal to logic or they'll desperately put all their money in and like go all in on appealing to emotion. We've probably seen those essays before. I think it's important to do all three. Now you don't have to do all three in a main personal statement. Because establishing the credibility of the author, which is to say, hey, I'm somebody who would contribute, you know, things of value or values to a college campus. I don't think a student has to prove themselves in their main essay. I think their activities list and their transcript can help do that. But how could a student do this? And this segues to something that I've been, been sitting in front of me all along. 
Here's how to Aristotle an application. Appeal to pathos, which is to say the heart, by demonstrating vulnerability. And if you've heard me share about, again, my you know four ways to up-level your college essay, the great college essay test, I talk about this vulnerability thing, okay? Appeal to the head, logos, through insight, sharing details with me that aren't details that I expected you to say, or saying something about what you just shared that I didn't expect you to share. And there, I can share more on that in the video that I'm gonna send you, because you might be wondering like, what do you mean by insight? Insight is saying something I didn't expect you to say and crafting it in a way. If, if I read a well-crafted essay that's been revised over many drafts, that appeals to my sense of logic and reason if I can kind of follow the flow. And if it's artful, bonus. And then ethos, your gut demonstrating cred credibility. And I think the activities and awards and even the supplements to some extent can show what you've done, you know, and by you, I mean the student. But there's ethos in another sense too. I think that a great college application should give me some sense of what your beliefs and your aspirations are, right? You're the student's ethos, okay? How do you do that? You've heard me say it before, but I'll say it again, through the values. This is what, this is gonna be like the, the thesis of my book, <laughs> okay? At the end of the session, I'll share with you a video that breaks down those four qualities that I mentioned and shows how to bring more values, vulnerability, insight, and craft into an essay. And it's something that you can just share with students so that they can do it on their own. Okay, the next bit that I wanna handle is the, the activities and awards list because I think students don't often make as much as they can out of the activities and awards list. So I need to, in order to do this, come back to my screen, hi. Um, so in my transition, this is my awkward Prezi transition, where I wanna know from you, in terms of the activities and awards list, what's something that you see students, uh, like an opportunity that they miss out on? Okay, something that students don't do. And I'm shifting over to my Prezi while you're typing that in. So what is something, an opportunity that you see students miss out on, on their activities list? I'm gonna grab water while I do that. It's right there, I'll be right back. I told you it wouldn't take long. All right. <laughs> they don't realize that they're mentoring younger students. Using quality verbs, Marcy, you've stolen my number one, my first tip. You should teach this. <laughs> you probably could. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Highlighting unique hobbies and talents. That's a good one. Part-time work. They forget about that. Totally. Yep, Liz is agreeing, not seeing work experiences and extracurricular. Action words, yep. <laughs> they don't highlight that they're trilingual. That's another one. Financial resp responsibilities at a young age. Totally, these are great. Not enough action verbs, great. You guys are on to my first tip. So here, just a real quick, this is what I've been working on for the past three months. I've been like banging away in the workshop. This is my mapping process and I'm gonna, I'm giving you the whole picture. So when I zoom in on this particular part, you'll see it in context. So, you know, what we're trying to help students do is to take the chaos of their lives, all of these individual moments and, you know, essences and images from their lives. First of all, how do we create exercises that help to generate that stuff? You know, a couple of the ones that I use, but how do we help them squeeze that into these, the, these gray boxes? And you see the main personal statement there at the start, in the middle, because I think it just takes the most time. And also because I'm a college essay guy. But what do we put in the activities list? What goes in the additional information section? Do students do a video or not? What goes in those supplemental essays? Okay, so trying to figure out of all of the experiences that I, the student, have had, which ones go where? And the way that I do that with students is through this preliminary sorting. So sometimes I'll use the UC personal insight question topics for this. Is like, what, what are your big super topics? And where could we slot those in? Then we get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> we get into the nitty gritty of, you know, the activities list, which we'll get into in just a second. The extracurricular essay, the specific supplements, the short answers. And then I think it's important to go back once the student has gone through the process of creating their application and actually making sure that the application is doing its job. In other words, and what is its job? I think it's, I'll give it away. I think it's to demonstrate that that student will contribute, it will make valuable contributions on the college campus and beyond. Okay, and how do we test for that? I think values, you know, looking to see where values are showing up, okay? But then once they've done that and they make sure that it is, then we have this beautiful final application. Doesn't this look nice? This is, this, this is just, you know, how it ends up looking, right? So, okay, we're talking about the activities and awards. What am I talking about? I'm talking about those 10 blanks on the Common App. You've got these 150 character descriptions and the five awards and honors. Okay, 
So here are my tips. The first one you already know, but I'll say it for you in my own way. Active verbs to explain what you actually did. So rather than worked at a clinic doing different things, kind of non-specific, try organized patient diagnosis notes, sterilized tools for surgeries, assisted with x-ray analysis. So two things I want to say about this. Um, the first one is notice how each of those, and this is something, even though, even if you say this to students, listen to me for a second, because you might not say it this way, and I think this is useful. Make each one a comic strip single image. So organize patient diagnosis notes. Like I can see the student like, oh, yes. You know. <laughs> Second image, sterilize tools for surgery. So like lifting up the thing and like pulling the thing out, you know, assisted with x-ray analysis. And I don't exactly know what that looks like, but the point is each of these are clearly different. Why is this useful? Because it helps you to make sure, this is the second tip, that the verbs aren't redundant. Because if, if a student says to me, instructing, helping, and teaching children tennis, I go, that's the same comic book image, right? Instructing, helping, and teaching children tennis is all the same image. But instead, if a student says, instructed tennis students in proper technique, I can see them like, you know, showing form, right? While imparting lessons in sportsmanship, health, and integrity. Now, that one's a little bit ambiguous, but I could imagine them, you know, sitting down and talking to a student and maybe just listening to them, you know, or health, you know, health lessons, you know, here's a banana. <laughs> Don't eat the chips, you know. So my point here is that these are clearly different. And if, if the student is thinking in terms of images for the activities list, imagine that they're actually doing a montage of these different activities. Okay. Third one, emphasize and qualify uh, a tangible, measurable impact. So whom did your activity help? How many people? How much money did you raise? So rather than raising money for children in the entire continent of Africa, which you've probably seen on activities list before, try instead raise $3,000 to provide this, th these many uniforms, so 18 uniforms, and this many scholarships for students at this particular school, right? So specific, specific, specifics. And I love to give them these examples, so feel free. I mean, you know, I, I pick examples from the, from the past, but I encourage counselors too to write their own version of this. So you feel free to use mine, but write your own version of like, here are 10 tips for your activities list and just hand it to them. It's a great way to avoid having to repeat yourself from, you know, every year. That's why I created all these resources anyway. I just decided to <laughs> give mine away. Um, four, if your role is simply member or participant, this is for students who are self-conscious that they don't have enough leadership stuff then it's okay to just list the activity. So just say National Honor Society, just say Cesar Chavez Day. You don't need to say member or participant because it continues to like point to the fact that you just showed up. This is what I tell students. So it's okay to just list it. And I tell students, don't try to do everything in 150 characters. Make selective use of that additional info section, right? So this one student who created three different tech prototypes where he researched, brainstormed, and created three prototypes of a water cleaning boat, recognized statewide, and then he says, see additional info for more. Great. Okay. I'm interested. So he's kind of connecting it to another part of the application. But you'll see in a second when I show it to you that he couldn't, have, couldn't possibly have fit it all in there. But it's important to make selective use, right? I tell students, don't go crazy with it. You don't need to, for absolutely everything on your activities list, have a little thing. Unless you're, now the exception is like if a student has three or four like major activities and they needed to expand on each of those, that might be an exception. Okay, but some students try and force this and it doesn't end up being truly additional information. Okay, additional info section. This is the fourth tip. I think that students often miss an opportunity to say something in this additional information section that could be a crucial contextual bit for their entire application. And I think the stakes are high with this. Now, I wanna qualify this by saying, these are things a student might include in the additional info section. Cause I don't want students to get into like that fear thinking, like we're in an arms race. And if everybody else is writing in the additional info section, I have to put something there. Cause this is not for everybody. Okay. But students are often baffled. They're not sure what to put in this section. So that's who this is for. But I really, really, really want to encourage you, and you probably do this, but just to qualify this for students to not, and, and different counselors feel different ways about this. Some counselors are like, definitely use this section. I'm more of like a maybe use this section. Some counselors are like, you're not allowed to use this section. You know, some counselors are like, it's our school policy that we don't use this section. And I worked with a student last year whose counselor said that to him. And, you know, he ends up getting into his, you know, the 
his top choice. And he didn't use that section. I tell this to say to students, like, you can get into a great school if you don't put anything in your additional info section. Okay. With all those qualifiers, one of the things that students can include is important details about activities that wouldn't fit, like the guy that I mentioned, the prototype guy. So here's his. So here he wrote just additional details for my tech prototypes. And he puts one, and then he describes what it is. It's a prototype that creates transverse waves of high magnitude in the water. Sounds legit. <laughs> here are the different uses. And here's an award that didn't fit in my award section. And he puts the award next to it so that it's connected. And then he mentions the next one. Here's the other one. I'm collaborating with this software company um, to create an app that will eventually be used to educate the public about uh, climate change and water pollution. And then that app is going to be released in February. Now, I want to know about that. If I'm an admissions reader, I want to know. This is for, and some students like get intimidated by that. They're like, I don't have anything like that. And I say, again, it's okay. You don't have to put anything there. A um, couple other awards won. But notice that it's just bullet point factual. This may be stuff that you know. And if you're hearing this, I hope that you're, so Nancy Greismer, Nancy, I don't know if you're on this call or not, but she's a counselor that I has been doing this a while and I really admire her. She came in and uh, to my session where I delivered this content at uh, IECA last year and Arun Panasami, another counselor sitting next to her, he's like, did you learn anything? She's like, no, but it was great to hear somebody else say it. <laughs> so if listening to this, it's just nice to hear somebody else say that, that we're kind of on the same page, great. And if we're not on the same page, I encourage you to like, during the Q&A or via email to like reach out to me and let me know if something that you disagree with, I, I want to know about that because I feel like that helps me figure out my thoughts better. Um, and, and if there are particular examples of like weird stuff you've heard done on the activities list or additional info, I want to hear about that too um, because I can kind of throw it into the salad of, of you know, all of this. I believe you know, together we're stronger. Okay, second, health stuff. Again, something that you know, but I just want to say to students and to other counselors, this can be super simple. Note on dropping volleyball. You know, my student that I worked with is like, what do I put? I was like, well, why did you drop volleyball? And she said, well, I had these chronic back problems. And so I said, well, write that. <laughs> She's like, just write it. I was like, yeah, I decided not to continue volleyball senior year due to chronic back problems. That's it. Now, if there's a little bit more to the story, you know, but after that, it allowed me to focus more in on school and, or I, I took up acapella, you know, as a result and focus my energy there. You could include that there. That's great. But I, I think sometimes readers wonder if, if, um, if activities drop, not all of them. And it's not going to be a, you know, a, a, I don't think it's gonna be a make or break thing, but, you know, just to sort of, you know, uh, satisfy someone's curiosity. IB extended essay abstracts. I love reading a good <laughs> IB essay extended abstract, said no one ever. This student uh, had one. He said, he for my IB extended essay, I wrote a 4,000 word thesis and calculated the negative externalities of land reclamation, the act of creating new land in the ocean, just to explain what that is, in Bahrain on native fishermen. So Bahrain was his native country. And he describes it in brief and you know what, why it was meaningful to him. And that's it. And I think that is a beautiful thing to do. Why? Because not a ton of students do these huge epic papers. I mean, I don't know. And you might be thinking, yeah, a lot. I have. A, I work with a lot of IB students. Well, not everybody does. So it can be an unusual thing. And I think this is a great phrase that I think it gives a window into a student's academic soul. And I heard this through the grapevine from another counselor. I don't know who said it. Um, but keep it short. You know, 75, 100 words. That's it. Potential red flag. So if the student dropped something or didn't have extracurricular involvement, I think it could make a big difference in the application. Maybe the difference. And I know that's kind of an extreme thing to say, but I want to give an example of five items that were included in one student's uh, additional info section from last year. So 11th grade couldn't finish wrestling season. Why? Mom and older brother were in car accident responsibilities at home stacked up. And I was also working at the time to pay bills. So I was unable to stay for practice. Simple, straightforward, helps us understand. Second, 11th and 12th summer courses, tried to take college courses during the summer, but I couldn't afford the classes. And there was an issue regarding my residency. Uh, the student was undocumented and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to let them know that that was a reason that he couldn't take these summer classes. Um, and he was working during the summer as well. So that was, I think, important context. So in other words, this euphemism of an issue regarding my residency would have been clear from the personal statement where he said, you know, that he was undocumented. Um, calculus BC explanation. After taking Calc AB in his junior year, he says, I wanted to take Calc BC my senior year. Unfortunately, his school was kind of understaffed. His teacher felt like he wouldn't be able to teach the class since he lacked the knowledge and training to teach it. 
So they didn't offer it. Instead, I took up a second science, AP Physics II, during my senior year. And he notes, I'm one of the first students to take this course at my school. He said that to me while we were talking about this. And I was like, put that in there. That's good to know. Now, you might think, well, his counselor would probably say that in the counselor letter. His counselor wasn't going to write him a letter because, and didn't, I, I don't believe, um, because he, he, he talked to her about including that. And she's like, I just don't have time to write letters for everybody. So this is, you know, an under-resourced school. I don't fault the school. I don't even fault the counselor. I mean, a little bit in my mind, I'm like, what? But I tell students to advocate for themselves. The additional information section is a great place to do that. Another example, highest SAT score in his class. Again, something the counselor, if she'd written a letter, might have said. But, you know, he scored a 1910 on his old SAT, which, you know, is good. But the fact that it was the highest score in his grade helps to contextualize it in, I think, a really important way. And he even put that on his award section. He asked me, should I put that as an award? I was like, does it feel like an award? And he's like, yeah. I was like, go for it. Um, and then AP Physics, I was the first student in my school to ever pass the AP Physics 1 exam. Huge, right? I'm getting chills thinking about that. And he scored a three. And the reason I told him to, I told him to put score to three right there because I wanted the reader to not have to go or to like forget that detail and to have to like to be reading what are his AP scores and see a three and be like, okay. And to not have to remember that this, you know, that it was, that he was the first student in school to pass it. I wanted the, those, that information to be right next to each other. So it was like really clear. Um, and so, you know, so he did. So did it make the difference? Did it make a difference? You know, 3.6 student, um, hardship, a lot of hardship, freshman year, sophomore year, upward trend in his grades, 1910, his dream school, he was like gunning for the UCs. And I was like, you're going to do great at UCLA or Berkeley. He really wanted to get into Stanford. And I was like, you know, good luck. He went through my courses. We had some one-on-one -on -one sessions and he got in. <laughs> and I was totally, we were both totally flabbergasted. I was sitting on this couch, which is behind the screen when he told me, and we were both like in tears when he called me. Um, so I, and I, and I offer this and I say that, and I offer this with tons of qualifications to students because I don't want every student with a 3.6 and a 1300, you know, on the new SAT to feel like they can get into Stanford. There's a ton more that I get into on my course when I talk about the student, because this is like parts of the course about why I think the student, you know, was worthy of, you know, getting into Stanford and why, like what other pieces of it. So he had a ton of leadership. Um, he had, you know, a wonderful story. Um, I don't I don't need to explain it all to you right now. Uh, another thing that students can put in the additional info section is just additional awards, right? So I had a student that I worked with that had 36 color guard awards and she like listed them all in her additional info Google doc. And I was like, okay. she's like, is that too many? I was like, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to say in this section? And she's like, yeah, I wanted to mention a couple other things. And I was like, let's trim it a little bit. So she put like her top 12 or something. Um, okay, what not to do? I say a second personal statement is not, in my experience, what admissions officers are looking for. You may know this, but I just remind students that, like, if you can't pick, you know, which essay topic, pick one. And then if you, if that stuff that you, that information that you want to say in the other one, can you shorten it and put it into bullet points and include that information? Okay, I think bullet points are always great in terms of again the information of it, but I wouldn't do you know a, a sort of a pathos essay. So there could this is the sort of for me this is like the you know the logic part right uh, where you're demonstrating you know or your or you know demonstrating your credibility. So maybe the ethos section uh, or the logos. I don't think this is the pathos section of the application. I'm really liking this. I'm that's I'm making st still new connections about this logos pathos ethos thing. Um, details showing that you might be overly obsessed with academic perfection, like why you got that B plus in chem. I say, cut it simply, uh, excuses. And there's a fine line between an excuse and a reason. And sometimes an excuse can like migrate over to becoming a reason. But you know, if a student just didn't like his teacher or just wanted to like take it easy, I, you know, I don't think that that's worth necessarily putting in additional info. I say, just, you know, leave that stuff out. And Yulia Karabakov from Tufts says, you know, if, if you tell me, telling me you cured ICD-9-140-239 doesn't mean that much to me. Sorry, I'm not a PhD in chem. Um, if you're going to talk about it, simplify it. And I love this advice. Using common language shows a much greater depth of understanding than copying and pasting an unnecessarily complex research proposal. That speaks to my soul as college essay guy, because in my resources, I'm always trying to like simplify things and be like, here's the, here's the nugget, here's the gem. Give us the nuggets, give us the gems. So we don't need, you could have a little complex language, but I tell students, if you're gonna put a bunch of science in there, make sure it's in English, okay? Um, 
Fifth, pasting a resume that repeats everything you've already said, it's redundant, right? Don't, students don't need to do it. Admissions readers, it's wasting their time. You know, and it's also kind of insecure, I think, to be like, hey, remember that other stuff that I told you about in the other part of the application? Look again. Also, it's redundant. That's a joke. All right. That's the fourth opportunity I think students miss is the additional info section. The fifth is that students wait until fall. And I think that's a mistake. Um, why? Because in the fall, students are, they've got their heaviest course load. And you'll hear students sometimes say like, it's like every teacher thinks that this is my only class. They've got the most leaders. So finally they're president or vice president of that club. Great, but now I got to do the job. And it turns out it's much more complicated than I thought. <laughs> Does it sound like anybody else you know? <laughs> and then SAT2s, uh, and that's as political as I'll get on this, by the way. Um, the SAT2s, maybe they're you know retaking their SAT or ACT, plus college visits. <sighs> my advice is to space that stuff out, right? So here's my college prep timeline, which you can download at tinyurl.com slash CEG college prep timeline. And the, the detailed version of this in that's, that's most applicable right now is I think April and May is a great time to focus on school and do really well in classes and to begin developing the list and thinking about that. And then I think once finals and APs are done and they're kind of starting that summer project or summer job or whatever that thing that's going to take up most of their time in the summer, then I think it's a great time to begin the personal statement because I think a student has enough information to start working on that. And then the summer project, whatever that is, they continue that in July. And I think they can start the supplements then because we know they're probably going to have a YS essay. And so once they've started their list, then they kind of know, okay, well, they're applying to Penn, probably going to have a, a big YS to write. Applying to Michigan, probably going to have that community essay to write. Now, obviously, if it's U Chicago or Deep Springs, we're going to have to wait until you know later in August and you know beyond to get those supplements but i think that students can start and write their ys and they can write their extracurricular um, essay and i think they can keep working on their personal statement my hope is that students can get a lot of the work done on the personal statement and some of their supplements in august so that the first day of se senior year they walk in all the other students are stressed out and this stu the student is like this <laughs> i love memes i love gifs um, and I think they're called GIFs, by the way. So quick recap, better ingredients, better pizza. What are those, uh, those ingredients common uh, those are uncommon connections, right? Uh, students oftentimes don't make use of the activities lists or the additional info section. I think they should start this summer. Okay. Um, speaking of, here's my little three minute PSA on my counselor training program, and then we'll do Q and a, uh, so I'm doing this counselor training program setting up for the summer and May 1st through 15th, it's on how to write a personal statement. And then May 16th through 30th, how to create a great college application and supplemental essays. So let me transition really quick, just so I can take you inside and let you see a little bit about what that looks like. So here it is. Hi again. Let me see. Transition to this. But um, but um, but um, here it is. Okay. So I'm calling it the how to apply to college series because I've been focusing on, you know, basically, you know, the main statement for much of my time. But I, I spent so much time working with students on other parts of the application that I have a lot to say about it, a lot to say about the supplemental essays. So the way it maps out week one is all about helping students find their deepest story. And so the way it works is once you sign up for the, the training program, you get access to the entire library of content. So it's like 50 videos all in these five to 15 minute chunks. That's what I spent the last three months doing is recording all these videos. And in the first week, we talk about, you know, how most American films are structured and, you know, what to do if a student has an experience challenges and has no idea what their future looks like. And the way it works is you have these videos to watch and it usually takes about, you know, I'm suggesting 40 minutes for the first module and 55 minutes. So it's kind of like a flipped classroom model where you watch two videos or, you know, videos in this about an hour and a half worth of videos. And then we meet. Uh, in the live session, and you can meet either at 10 in the morning or four in the afternoon, whichever works best for you. And we do this four times. So the second week, we talk about revising the personal statement, how to know it's, it's, it's doing its job. And then in the third week, we get into the college application. So I help, so one of the, some of the resources that I created for this are like on the activities list, those verbs, those powerful verbs that students need. <laughs> I created this epic list of like activities list verbs for students to kind of look at. And I used it, you know, I basically used those like 
uh, resume, you know, resume verb, like great resume verbs and combine those for activities lists. So just to give students some ideas of what kinds of verbs, you know, to also jog their memory about what kind of stuff they actually did on their activity. I talk a lot about the YS. I analyze essays. I've got a 20 page guide on that. Um, and then on the fourth week, we talk about the supplements. So the extracurricular essay, which can be a lot of different things, but I talk about two structures that I haven't taught before, uh, which are brand new. Um, and that's the Elon Musk exercise, I call it, uh, one of those. And then um, we talk about the Stanford essays, the quotation essay, we get into the diversity essay, which I don't even think is listed here, how to work on that one, the community essay. So you can find this and this will pop up in the, um, in the uh, chat box, a little link will pop up. If Devin, if you could just throw that up, that would be great. There's a student version I'm doing. And again, if you can't join live for those live sessions, don't worry, because you're going to get access to all of it. And I'll send you the recordings of any of those live sessions you miss. Oh, and I'm also going to be doing some mini sessions. So by mini sessions, let me just switch over again. By mini sessions, what I mean is I'm working on some new content on things like how do we know if an, an essay is like, how, if, how do we know if, if what we're offering is like too much help? Um, so I'll be doing a little session on that and then I'll be doing Q and A each of the days with you answering questions. You know, I've already gone over this, but it's basically like 50 modules. Um, what else do I wanna say about it? Uh, weekly assignments. So it's kind of like a practicum where you'll have these assignments to work on and then we'll do the Q and A. Uh, I'll be reviewing students' essays. So if you're working with students and you wanna like get thoughts on a YS based on the stuff I've shared during those Q and A sessions, I'll be doing live review of those. And I'm only teaching this live once. So you can potentially get the course you know, in, in a couple months, but I'm only doing the live Q and A. So if you're interested in doing the course, I would say do it now so you can get access to the, uh, the live Q and A or the recorded Q and A sessions. So how much is it? You're probably wondering. <laughs> it's $14,000. I'm just kidding. Um, but this is actually how much one person who shall not be named charges for uh, a one week boot camp. So in some sense, that makes sense, right? Not to me. Um, the, the UC extension course is just to offer a comparison. If you take those UCLA or UC Irvine courses, which I highly recommend, they're great. I went through that program. They're 685 each now. And so it's 1370 for two of those courses, because that's essentially what this is. Um, but the last minute rate that, that these courses are going to be is going to be 597 each. And so that's 1197 for both of them. I didn't do my math right. It's 1194. Um, but for each course, the early bird rate, and that ends this weekend, it's going to be 497. So you'll see that on the website when you go to it, that it's 497 for the course. But for today only, uh, if you get one course, you can get the second for half off. So it's 250 bucks off. And the way you get that is just buy the course, buy, buy either one, and you'll automatically be taken to, to this offer. Okay. So to clarify, today only, you get buy one, get one half off, which is I think a special they're doing at Lucky Jeans right now. Um, but this course, this will help you with your students more than Lucky Jeans. Um, and it's 497 for each course. This is basically everything I know about the college essay and application to date. Um, and, and so next week it's gonna jump up to, it'll be 597 for each course. If you've got any questions, you can email info at collegeessayguide.com. Thank you for bearing with me through this PSA. It's time for the Q and A. Um, 795 each says Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for letting me know. Okay. So the UC Irvine are 685, the UCLA are 795. So cheaper than a UC Irvine, than a UCLA course. And so here, let me just grab that link just for you folks who are wondering. Here's where you sign up for it. I'll paste it again. Here's the sign up link. And as you go through the sign up page, you'll see a lot more information. There's a, each one has a really thick course guide with lots of sample essays. Um, and, and I'm, you know, on the Q and A, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking those Q and A questions and like popping them into the course. So they'll exist. So my hope is that by the end of this year, by the end of 2018, I've answered every question that I can, and I've put them into these two courses. So by getting access to the courses, you'll get access to the, like my entire library of Q and A. Let's see, we'd like to see the summer timeline again. So Rachel, if you just Google college essay guy, college prep timeline, you'll find that. It's on my free resources page. Ah, uh, let's see, I, actually, let me just type it in here. Um, it's tiny URL and CEG. Have it. Devin, would you mind typing that in if you're listening? I think you are. Uh, 
<laughs> Rachel says, if I wasn't eyeball deep in two UCLA courses, I would leap into this. This is practical and so new. Thanks, Rachel. I appreciate it. Did I miss a link to this webinar? Not sure what you mean, Angel. Devin, maybe you can answer the question. Um, and Devin, would you mind popping in just the link to the uh, summer timeline? That would be so awesome. What else? I won't be sending a transcript around after the webinar. Sorry, it would take me a while to like put together a transcript of this. So, sorry. Um, I've rarely seen an essay, says Rebecca, written about events that occurred fall of senior year. I'm I'm the same way. And I think that if students do have big experiences during the summer and the fall, it ends up impacting me, like the third, fourth, and fifth paragraphs, but not often the first parts. Can students put abstracts that don't win awards? I say for sure, Preetha. Crying a little bit hearing about the student. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Me too. It was, yeah, it was kind of magical. And I was really excited about Stanford. <laughs> I was like, Thanks, guys. You saw him and you, you know. Um, seems maybe a little strange. Kiddo would have info about other scores. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Lisa. Maybe you can clarify. Uh, and I think that's referring to the AP. Oh, 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 I see what you mean. Ah, the SAT score. Like, how did he know that this was? Um, the highest score. I think his counselor just told him. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, that's a good, that's a great point. That maybe he should have included how he knew that. Um, but he, he didn't. Um, let's see. Liz says, absolutely. Rather than leaving it up to an admissions rep to make their own assumptions, include the additional info. And I would add not to make it come off as excuses and explain how it changed the opportunities or what they learned. It sounds like we're on the same page. Layla, should one student have more than one additional info topic? There's no shoulds here. It's just, what do they need? You know, what do they need to explain their circumstances? Some students will need more, some students won't, okay? For the courses, what I'll say this too is like, there's a 100% guarantee. So if you don't like the courses or you feel like, you know, ah, this isn't, isn't worth my money, let me know and I will refund you all, all the monies. So that's, you know, just to kind of set you at ease with that. Sometimes people are like, that's a lot of money, but it's like, I want you to feel like it's worth it. So try it out, <laughs> try it out for a week. Um, uh, oh, Devin is sending me a message. If you need more time to get approval on a purchase, just email info at college essay guy. So if you've got somebody that you need to like talk to in order to get permission to buy the courses, just email info at college essay guy and say, hey, I want to do the offer. I just need to get approval from my principal or whoever it is. Um, let's see. Ba -dum -bum -bum. What else? What else? Let me zoom up and see what other questions are coming in. Have I abandoned the essence objects exercise? Heck no, Karen. I totally have not abandoned the essence objects exercise. I think it's a great way to start. And when it comes to the personal state, actually, I mean, so when I work with students, you know, I have them do essence objects, values, and there are like three others that I use that I all put in the course that basically for me are essential to sort of getting them in that creative headspace. Um, and I think not just for the personal statement, but I think for the application. Um, cause I want students to kind of get, there are other brainstorming exercises that I've used that are somewhat useful, but not as creative as this one. And I also want to get them, I use the essence objects still because I want to get them in that like image making mode. Okay. Um, Paula asks, if you're not available for every day during the course, can you watch it later? Absolutely. For sure. Um, am I going to make this offer again? Pr not, uh, probably not. Or I want to say no, Rachel. Um, Here's what I'd say. If you're going to take the course later at any point this year, I would say lock it in now um, because I don't know. I mean, I, there's a part of me that feels like it's still kind of too cheap um, or in, I shouldn't say cheap, inexpensive. Um, so so I guess the answer is I don't know. Um, that's the truthful answer. Um, so Maria is asking, how do you take advantage of this offer register today? Yeah. So I, we've set it up on the website so that, you know, through today that if you buy one course, it'll automatically allow you to do the 50 percent off the second course. Um, and then we're going to take that off of the website, basically. Should students put the date or year for the activities? And there's a place to do that, Preetha. And I think that on the, if you're talking about the, uh, the activities list, yes, the Common App allows you to do that. If you're talking about the additional info section, if, if they feel like it's relevant or important, um, you know, so <laughs> that's the short answer. Um, to confirm, do I, do I think, this is a good question from Kate, do I think it's too risky to begin writing supplements prior to August 1st? Potentially. It depends on the supplement, okay? 
So what do I mean by that? Like if a student starts working on the supplement for like a, a liberal arts school, let's say it's Haverford or Swarthmore, you know, something like this. And those I find sometimes shift or change. Um, and so I don't encourage, and it's, it's super specific, then I don't encourage them to, to for sure begin or to at least begin, but in the back of their minds that they could change. What I'm talking about is beginning their why us statements and their extracurricular statement. Okay, because you can start the why us research for, for the school, because even if they, the school takes away the why us essay, at least they've done a lot of research. So they know if that school's a fit. Right. So I don't think that's wasted time. And with the extracurricular essay, I'm talking about the large one, for example, that. You know, Princeton or Harvard or I know not not just the highly selectives, um, but like uh, but, 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 but let me think of another one. Um, at Michigan, you know, Michigan's got this community essay that's been there for several years, like writing a, that community essay, if the student knows they're going to apply to Michigan, I think is, is it risky? Yeah. Could they change it? Yeah. But I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good bet that they're going to be able to use that essay, but I'm mostly interested in finding topics. And this is what I do on the course topics that can work for many different things. So the student, the work that they're doing and the work that they're doing in, so I'm doing a student version of this course as well. So if you're watching this and thinking, Oh, I'd love for my students to go through these courses in June, I'm also going to be doing, and you can find info on this on that same link. I'm going to be doing, um, a, uh, you know, a, a student version of this over two weeks. So like a one week intensive on the personal statement, a one week intensive. And it's really similar, you know, similar content. The content that I'm doing for the counselor version is is similar to the content that I'm sharing with students. It's uh, the the voice that I use a little bit different. Some of the tips that I give obviously are a little different um, in the way that I talk, but there is a student version that I'm doing with this. But I encourage students to do the work that they can that's going to be usable for different parts of the application. Um, Devin, will you type in the tiny URL just for the summer? And if you, if, if he, if he's not getting this, then we'll just, I'll send this link to you. Don't worry for the summer timeline. When you talk about uncommon language for the personal statement, this is Joanne. Do you mean actual vocab? What do you do with a student whose vocabulary isn't all that uncommon? I don't force it. You know, I mean, certain students, I, like I want them to write in the way that they would, they would write. Right. So for uncommon language, if a student, you know, I'll say like, you know, I'll give examples of like, Metaphors. I don't think like just putting in 50 cent vocab words is necessarily up leveling the language. Sometimes it is. And I'll give examples of essays where I see that students have done that, but that's not where I want to focus. And it's certainly not where I want to focus early on in the process. This is kind of like, so let me say this. So zooming back, these are just the qualities that I see in essays that I really love versus essays that I think don't stand out. Okay. Not every student is going to have an uncommon topic and not every student is going to have an, you know, uncommon language. Okay. I don't know if I I'm going to end up flipping somebody off if I do that. But I, that's why I think those uncommon connections is really the place to focus. If a student is, let's say, a B student, they're, you know, 3.1 GPA or something, and they're not, you know, a writer, and th th that student can still do the uncommon connections. If they end, that student ends up doing uncommon language, having a nice metaphor here or a nice poetic phrase there, that's bonus. Okay. But I would, I would focus really on those, those uncommon connections. I know I said that already. I hope that answers your question, Joanne. My new book. Yeah, I'm writing a new book, Susan. Um, where do I find the values list? Bettina, just Google values exercise. Let's see. Should students include a link to their digital portfolio? Sure, why not? Will they click it? You know, who knows? Depends on the school, depends on the rep, depends on how many applications that rep needs to get through. Um, if there's a place that the school asks for it, definitely. If it's just the additional info, I, you know, sure you know, include more rather than less, you know, don't regret that you didn't include that and think, oh, that's the reason I didn't get accepted. Thoughts on videos and e-portfolios, same question. So I have lots of thoughts on videos that I can't get into right now, but I, I think that because they're becoming more popular and actually they're becoming more popular slower than I thought, but um, I think that students should include them if, if it doesn't feel like an, a huge burden. But I think that these videos are short personal statements. And they're like, you know, 30 seconds or less now, right? That's what I think Zimi's offering like 27 seconds or something. And they got to shoot it on their phone, which I think is a great idea. Um, but so yeah, I'm not trying to like just sell the course, but I have like 18 tips. Um, and I'm trying to think of what a couple of them are. So one of them is a really simple one. If this is what you're asking for, Elizabeth is like stabilize your phone. You know, you could do it selfie mode, which is fine. But there are some really simple ways that you can stabilize the phone. Make sure that you've captured good sound. So I have a little microphone here that's like, you know, 70 bucks on Amazon. And I like to think that it improves the sound of my webinar. Um, so, you know, little investments like that are borrowing a mic and recording separate sound and then syncing them later. 
can be a really good thing. Now, if you're just recording that on your phone, you can't do that. But there are simple mics that you can get, like a lapel mic that you can plug into a phone that are like 20 bucks or less. Um, so that those are some thoughts off the top of my head on videos. Um, I think that the value, the videos should show values. Uh, what do I think about Zimi? I'm kind of waiting to see what everybody else thinks about Zimi, Robin. Um, I, you know, like, like I said, I'm giving tips for students on those, but I didn't have a ton of students. I had like one student who made a video last year um, out of the, you know, 30 or so students that I worked with. And I feel like, you know, and it was really good. And and if, if she lets me, I'm going to, I want to show her video at some point, because I think it's, it's really, it's fun and it's quirky and, and great. Um, but I'm kind of waiting to see like, will, you know, will colleges pick this up? Is this becoming an important part of their application? And so far, there aren't a ton of schools that are saying that. Do you award CEU credits for the sessions? Jessica, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how to do that, but if you want to email me and help me figure out how to do that, I would love to issue continuing education units credits. <laughs> um, Joanne, a student suffering from depression as a junior in counseling has drastically hurt grades. Good for additional info or stay away from this. It depends, right? <laughs> on, and, and, then, and so if you're not in the college admissions counseling group uh, on Facebook, join it. If you're not in my college essay forum for counselors, which is my private Facebook group for counselors, um, it's not my group, it's our group, but um, it's one that I started. Just search college essay forum for counselors we, and then search in that group depression. We've had a couple conversations about this so you can kind of see what other folks think. And in the on the, on the Facebook, college admissions counselors, search for the word depression and you'll see some great threads from admissions reps and you know from folks on both sides of the desk. It depends. Um, it depends on when the student experienced it. If it's really fresh, then it's harder to talk about. If the student experienced it as a junior, I'm kind of interested in seeing what happens with the, with the grades later in junior year and in senior year. You know, does an upward trend end up showing? Um, you know, how strong the depression was. Was it something that was debilitating, like there was hospitalization. Um, what else? I mean, with the context of the whole application, like does the student have other things that are, you know, shining, shimmering, splendid that sort of is like, oh, and then also there was this depression thing that it sort of doesn't overwhelm the application. What is the student writing the main essay about? These are all considerations. So I would feel uncomfortable, you know, just sort of making a general thing for this student uh, without knowing the context. Um, but what I'll say is um, I've worked with students and you probably have too, who have disclosed depression, who have not disclosed depression. Um, and some of them, and they've gotten into great schools. Um, you know, it's it's risky, so I would tread carefully with it, but um, it depends. <laughs> Sorry to give a, kind of a nuanced answer. Um, how long will you have access to the videos and other course content? I may not have time to watch it. You'll have access for as long as you need it, Laurie. Um, I work with third culture kids who typically move at least once during high school. Do you have any tips to how they can highlight the move and additional info? Yeah, I mean, I think it needs to come back to, and, and, and the reason I love bullet points is that you can't really hide behind bullet points. Sometimes students kind of get trapped in the language of like, how do I say this? And I think it's important that students should also, you know, basically, you know, um, uh, you know, come back to, okay, so what, is, what I would tell a student, like if you moved around, give me some bullet points telling me, so what, how, what this meant to you, you know, what, what is the impact that it had on you? So bullet point that for me. And if the student doesn't have a lot to say about it, it might not be something that they would include. Right. Um, let's see what else da -da 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 -da. partnership program. Oh, Devin is reminding me that I have a partnership program. So one of the things, if you want, you know, me to work with your students by in this kind of format, counselors, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll sign up like their whole, all their whole cohort of students to like go through my courses and over the summer have a draft of their application done and their personal statement. Right. And then they come back and they work one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, so that's something that you can find out on my website. Just go to collegeessayguy.com partnership. You can actually, Devin, would you send the link out to that? Um, that would be great. And, oh, I'm going to give away a free book. Let me not forget about that. So um, how should we play this game? Let's, let's do a free book to, uh, I'm trying to think of a fun way to do this. Let's do a free book to whoever. So for that college prep timeline, whoever prints it out first and puts it up on their wall <laughs> and takes a picture of it and emails it to info at collegeessayguy.com. So the first, let's say the first three people to do that will get a free book. Um, 
And if you're not the, one of the first three, you can get it on Amazon for like nine bucks, but I'll give away a free book to you, to the first three people to email info at college essay with a photo of that college prep timeline uh, on their wall. Um, and I would so appreciate a, a, a review. I'm trying to get to hundred Amazon reviews um, in exchange, but that's not required. We're over. So I'm going to take two more questions and then we'll, we'll call it. When facilitating an essay workshop on the shorter side, like two hours, do you have a good place on your website that helps to hone in on the most helpful impact, uh, helpful or impactful content? I do, there's a course for that. <laughs> so Stephanie, so there are two resources that I wanna point you to. So in terms of creating a workshop, I created an entire course last year called How to Lead a Life-Changing Essay Workshop. And if you go to the collegeessayguy.com page, click on the counselor resources or click on courses and you'll see that course and it's a five, module, you know, it's a five week course that's all recorded, you get instant access to it. And it walks you through exactly which exercises I would do at exactly which point and why. Also, I have this essay workshop in a box that's uh, that's on the site. And it's kind of like it maps out exactly how I do workshops. So having gotten questions like that enough, I was like, Oh, I should create these resources. So there's the essay workshop in a box, which kind of gives you the map. And then there's the counselor training program, which basically tells you, you know, based on this map, Here's why I do each of these exercises. Here's why I think they're great exercises. Here's what to do when, okay? So there's that. So that's that's what I would point you to. Um, Kathy, how do you coordinate the additional info section with adding a resume? I joined late, so I apologize if you already discussed this. I would say, I mean, I, I only tell students, only, only some students end up uploading resumes um, because if the additional info is already doing it and the activities list is already doing it, do they need a resume? Not necessarily. If they do a resume instead, that's fine too. If a student's got a great resume that they've already worked on, then they can just include that and they don't necessarily need the additional info section. So to me, those kind of are, are the same thing. Okay, that's what I got. Uh, I've already run over. So thanks so much. If you've got any questions, email info at collegeessayguy.com and I'll see y'all around. Bye.